this is Bob Costas, and you're listening to the ML Sports Platter. The ML Sports Platter is back with you all over the major platforms like Spotify, Google, Apple, Stitcher, and Deezer. Make sure wherever you get your podcasts on your smartphone device, you download, subscribe, leave feedback, and a five-star review all apart of the Brawl Network. You can, you can hit me on Twitter, at Mike L Sports, and of course, at Network Brawl. And make sure to download and subscribe to all of those podcasts as well under the umbrella. This podcast, the ML Sports Platter, brought to you by our great friends at Empower Federal Credit Union, Stanley Law Offices, and Bryant and Stratton College. Log on to bryantstratton.edu for every and in life. Bryant and Stratton College, the official college of the ML Sports Platter. Two awesome locations in Central New York, James Street, and in Liverpool. And make sure you start up those two- and four-year degrees. Classes are always starting soon at Bryant and Stratton College. BryantStratton.edu. I'm going to introduce the next guests of the podcast here in, in just a moment, but kind of set it up for you. Um, we're going to talk to, to Seb Zudi and uh, Danny Simmons, both involved in this incredible Suffer for Good documentary that's been going on here for a couple of months, all over VOD, DVD, and digital. The Russian boycott of the 1984 Olympics in L.A., which, as many of you sports fans know, um, it followed four years after the American-led boycott of the 1980 Summer Olympics in Moscow. Uh, The boycott involved 14 Eastern Bloc countries and allies led by the Soviet Union. They initiated the boycott on May 8th of 1984, and then boycotting countries organized another major event called the Friendship Games in July and August 84. And even though the boycott led by the Soviet Union affected Olympic events that were normally dominated by the absent countries, 140 nations took part in the Games, which was a record at the time. But... Uh, the boycott obviously was a a huge, huge deal, and it shattered a ton of dreams, including those of Ethiopian boxer Seb Zudi, who was unable to uh, to be a part of the delegation. And uh, in this film, uh, Danny Simmons, the filmmaker, has brought the inspiring story uh, to light, and uh, and it's just a terrific, terrific piece. And we're going to chat right now with. Uh, Seb Zudi, who is uh, just, I mean, the resume uh, put together here is, is remarkable. Uh, Ethiopian boxer, pro UFC striking coach, MMA and boxing coach, and of course the filmmaker, Danny Simmons, the director of the documentary Suffer for Good. Uh, again, go get it all over uh, video on demand, DVD, digital, etc. Let's bring Seb and Danny in right now. Welcome in. How are you guys? Thanks so much. Thank you for having us. So let's get. Thank you very much for having us on. You bet. Let's get right into this here, quick, Seb. I mean, when when you look at this and having to kind of relive all of it through through the documentary, how, how difficult has it, you know has it been? Was it you know creating it from the standpoint of of having to relive this you know nearly what forty years ago situation? Uh, g- get into that experience a little bit. That for me. I want to just uh, like to say again, thank you very much for having us. And uh, Danny and I, and we really go through really hard times to finish this job. Accomplish. Really, we suffer for good for this. And uh, uh, at the same time, and I go through a really hard time in my life. And as you see, I don't know if you see the movie or not, uh, it's the, a very tough challenge that I passed through. And uh, to put myself in the camera, include my wife, include my kids, is a really tough situation that I go through. And at the same time, I, I'm not an English speaker. It's not this, it's just it's a second language for me. And also, the camera come to my face and to speak English and to directly to translate my Amharic to English. And it was a really tough time to myself to put myself on camera it's just really hard time that i go through that one is a very big challenge for me not the boxing and at the same time to train all these fighters and all the celebrities and athletes different athletes that i te- I, i've been teaching boxing and it wasn't easy to finish the whole movie also so it wasn't easy it's just a really tough challenge that we go through yani was the first time to make the kind of this documentary movie and 
he's learning, I'm learning. And really, it was a big challenge. It wasn't easy. And really, like I said all the time, we suffer for good. And we go through it. It was a big challenge. And, you know, finally, we did a really good job. And we are here right now. And we accomplished this. And thank God. <laughs> Danny, when, when, when this, how did this whole thing come to fruition, first of all? I mean, you know, can you go back kind of the beginning? And, and obviously, till now, now we're, we're a couple months into it. But... How did it all start? And, and, and as far as the feedback and, you know, the, the, the film itself, um, how do you feel about it now? Yeah, great question. Uh, thanks, th- th- thank you for having us on. Um, yeah, the film started, I was, I was working at Sony Pictures, and there's a, there's a gym there, and Seb was training amateur MMA fighters and, and a lot of pro fighters, also celebrity clients in this gym, and it's sort of like an Equinox but for Sony employees, and I, at the time I was in a corporate environment working, you know, in international distribution for the motion picture group at Sony. And I, I went in there, I saw people, you know, sweating it out. You know, I'm a former athlete, so I figured I could I could pick it up. And I, I took a class one day, and within five minutes of his warm up, I mean, I was just I was pouring sweat out of my out of my body. Seb laughing at me, and, and he kind of swept me off my metaphorical my athlete feet. And I was I was blown away by his technique and how he was hitting me with the with the mitts, and I, and I felt like, wow, my brain hasn't done some sort of uh, exercise like boxing before. And then I heard his accent. I was like, where are you from? You know, I've never heard, you know, someone with that kind of accent. You know, and he told me, I'm from Ethiopia, it's from Amharic, and I was like, well, what's your story? And he's like, ah, you don't want to know, man. I was like, I got to know. And so I, 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 you know, I asked him, and he told me about, you know, I'm from Ethiopia. I was affected by the 1980 boycott in the 1984, obviously, the boycott by the uh, Moscow, you know, by the Soviet Union, uh, and their boycott of the LA Olympics, and ultimately, I didn't get my opportunity, and I was like, holy cow, that's so sad, I didn't really know about it, so I started looking it up, and I was like, man, we gotta, we gotta make a short documentary on you, and then from there, you know, we started filming, and, and you know, five years later, here we are with the film, and Gravitas Ventures picked up Worldwide Rights, so it, you know, we, we learned on the job, and, and I think we did a darn good job at it, and, and the reviews have been great, and people, it's a, it's a grassroots effort, so we just keep you know, getting more and more opportunities to share Seth's inspiring story, and, and he's a representation, in my opinion, of the American dream, and, and, and obviously, you know, Maddie is just this total personification of what it is to, to suffer for good, to, to instill you know, great work ethic in, in, in our youth, and it's, just like, it's really cool to see Maddie grow up and be this like, you know, working at uh, two jobs and going to college, and it's a beautiful thing. So how I feel about the project is I feel I'm very satisfied. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy, and I think Seb and I are pretty proud. Go ahead and add to that, Seb, if you'd like. For me, it's it just really, uh, I, I don't have any, you know, I can't find any word to explain why we go through, but this is Danny and I when we met, and I, you know, he think he's a great athlete in first, and he did baseball and high level, he played for college and so on. So, and he asked me, and so, well, who are you? Are you from Cuba? You have a, you know, no, I'm not from Cuba because he said Cubans have a great boxers, and you know, most of us we, you know, of course, a whole world they know Cubans have a great boxers. And I don't know, I'm not, I didn't know they have a, you know, Ethiopian, they have a great boxers. You know, I, I, mean, we have, I told you we are runners. No, no, we're not runners only. Then we go through it and I, you know, I, you know, I punch him in the face, bring it back to him and just you know, hit him left and right. You fast, you know, uh, you fast, you said you fast, not. No, come on, push it. And we became really having a have good have a relationship. And he asked me, what did you tell me about your story? And I, you know, trying to a little bit. Of, eh, well, you have a great story. Can I tell me a little bit? Yeah, we're trying to make a documentary, but the guy told me, but it takes him quite a while. So can I do it? He said, sure. And the next day, I take, I send him the address, and I was training a professional MMA fighters. He came to the gym with a camera, and I said, "Well, this guy must be serious." And it's keep going, keep going. It just takes us quite a while to build up, and we, we became very friendly. And I like as a family, and we finish the films, and we go through it, and it's really, really a proud of what he did, and it's really also a terrific, it's just a really amazing person that I made him in a back home in Ethiopia when I was a staff, the knife, and and also he 
allowed me to get surgery in the Netherlands. And really, really um, helpful. I really, I, I always, I like to say thank you for Dr. Rick. And it's a very, very uh, inspiring movie. I suggest to see everybody to see the movie. And I like to get a feedback from uh, people too. And, and uh, we are here now uh, to share our story for the world. And thank God. We're here on the ML Sports Platter with the filmmaker Danny Simmons and Seb Zudi, uh, of course, in the film as well. Just a terrific, terrific story. Uh, Suffer for Good, the documentary, uh, go get it, video on demand, DVD and digital. Uh, Gravitas uh, Ventures, as mentioned, of course, distributing it now. And Danny, we, we go back now to the, to the 80s with, with, with this Olympic in 1980 and then 1984 um, the boycott obviously involved 14 Eastern Bloc countries and allies, and it was led by the Soviet Union at the time. Ethiopia, I mean, how, how did they fall into the, the the boycott decision? Were they pressured by, controlled by Soviet? You know, did did they follow along? What, how did it? How did that eventually go uh, to the point where Zeb, you know, obviously had the unfortunate circumstances in those games? Yeah, you know, you know, this is something I didn't even uh, know about until you know I met Seb. But yeah, the the, the truth is is that in you know Haile Selassie was was overthrown by the Turkish regime, and it was sort of uh, one of the fronts of the Cold War. It's actually uh, you know one of the first time Cuban and, and Soviet forces actually were in Africa, and that there was a, a war, and that kind of um, played a factor. You know, there was an East versus West happening in Africa. Obviously, we have Afghanistan, we all know about. But there's also a front in Cuba and in uh, Africa as well. And so during this time, there was a switch of funding and financing and, and aid that was going back from east to west. And at the time, in, in 1980, Jimmy Carter decided to boycott the Moscow Olympics uh, because of the Cold War in Afghanistan, because of the, the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. We obviously know that the United States at the time you know, was involved in um, – in that a little bit, and, and, and in 1984, uh, we, in, in turn, the retaliation was from the Eastern Bloc countries, as you said, and allied with those Eastern Bloc countries was Ethiopia. And Seb, you know, he had a Soviet, uh, a Russian uh, boxing coach, and that's where the, you know, the etymology of suffer for good actually kind of comes from Russia. So it's a very Eastern Bloc mentality, you know, grind, work right. hard, and 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 get your gets a positive result after working hard. So it's a unique thing, and I, I didn't know too much about it. But there was a red scare in Ethiopia. Uh, you'll see in the film Professor Edmund Keller, who's a widely published uh, professor at UCLA and an and author, and he wrote about the revolution in, in in Ethiopia, and he lived it. So he actually was in Addis Ababa when uh, Dr. Rick Hodes was there, and uh, it's a fascinating history. I didn't know about it. Um, and, and it's a unique, you know, unique story. And, and Seb's one of the, the few athletes who didn't get their opportunity. And you and I know that the, the Olympics, you really can only get to your peak of a talent when you train perfectly for that time in 1984. And it's, it's unfortunate when some athletes lose that opportunity. Danny, what do you hope, and we'll end with this and then Seb, you can, you can jump in after with an answer. Um, what, what do you guys hope that people say about this documentary after they get done watching it. Danny, you can start. Yeah, I think I hope what people say after they watch uh, Suffer for Good is that, wow, I want to go back and do whatever it is that I dreamed of. You know, for me, it might be making a film, right? That was my, it's kind of my, my thing that I'm trying to overcome. Uh, some people have said that they're inspired to go back into and play basketball or exercise more, or be in better shape. Others just say they want to be a better father, a better uh, coach, mentor, friend. So I, I hope that it sort of grows in that way. I mean, there's so many people who have been inspired by Seb. He really is more than just a coach. He's a community leader, uh, Alliance Krav Maga and, and, and a PKG and different MMA gyms. It's like, you know, there's the, the, the mind that builds and, and grooms various athletes to go out and succeed in the UFC or Bellator or even – as pro boxers, and it, it, it totally is amazing. Like, even now, he's Zeb's working and in, in helping people in the pandemic overcome Parkinson's disease with, with training for boxing. So I think what I hope is that people see this as like, hey, how do I give back? How do I work a little harder, suffer a little bit more, and uh, do, you know, tr- 
truly take life and respect that we have one chance to do this. And let's go go in it and, and work as hard as we can. Zeb, what would you say here? Yeah, well, they don't know how to suffer for good. And I can't say that because I see a lot of, I train now people here that with the Parkinson's, even regular people here you know, now where I am I right now, Nashville. And people say have so they want to do everything easy way. They want to do drive through everything, but there is nothing come drive through. Like there is no express way. So we have to struggle. Most people they don't like to suffer for quite a while. They just they want to have like express way. They just fast right away. They don't have. I see in a bank when you standing back five minutes. They where's your manager? People don't have any patience in this kind. We need to pass that. We need to stop. We need to have a patience for anything that we have. Relationship, marriage, and all, you know, finance. We need to struggle in a workplace. We can have a lot of challenge. So we need to struggle and pass it. And we need to, we're not going to die. It's just let it go. And we need to stick with it, with our problem. We create the problem. We need to solve it. You know? So at this time, most people, they get depressed. Finance issue, health issue, family issue, relationship with the kids, with the family. You know, we need to stick with it. We need to suffer. So we have to suffer. We have to suffer and forget. We have to pass that. And people that who wants to watch a movie or who's going to watch a movie, and they will learn how to suffer for good. Definitely, it was a good message, and they will learn something. I'll pass all my story for people. I'm glad I'm. It gives a great privilege for myself to share my story and what I passed through. And I hope they will learn something to stick with their problems and to go through it. And they will be stronger and a better person and a better father. Well, this was awesome. Seb Zudi, of course, and uh, and Danny Simmons here on the ML Sports Platter. Go check it out. Uh, Suffer for Good on DVD and digital platforms, video on demand. Uh, just a terrific, terrific uh, film uh, here and, and for everybody. Just lessons learned across the board. Historical, important, social, uh, you name it. Again, Danny Simmons and Seb Zudi, uh, Suffer for Good, available on DVD, digital, and video on demand. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Pretty awesome stuff from the folks from Suffer for Good. Make sure you do check that out. ML Sports Platter brought to you by Empower Federal Credit Union and Welch and Company Jewelers. I just wanted to quickly hit on some college basketball, um, you know, news and notes. Uh, what I've seen kind of focusing on a, a couple of the big teams at the top, teams that I think are clear Final Four contenders, clear national championship contenders. And, and, you know, first of all, again, just like baseball, just like the NBA last year and now this, just like the NHL last year and now this, just like the NFL, uh, you know, kudos and hats off to everybody for getting the games going. Um, I mean, you know, the, the testing, the home and road stuff, the constant challenges, um, we, we, we know the deal by now, you know, it, it, it's kind of like, it, it's almost like on Twitter. If you ask a question, you know, it's gotta be, uh, Hey, asking, not arguing, <laughs> you know, where in a podcast uh, or a show now you've got to say, Oh, Hey, I love golf, but I'm not a white supremacist. Uh, you know, Hey, I think this, but I'm not that you have to almost kind of like, you know, apologize or state a fact or state something before, uh, you either uh, make your case or make your point. Um, college basketball, I thought this year, the one criticism that I would have would be that I thought they could have gotten a lot more games in. You know, I mean, for example, you look at a team like Michigan, who just came off of playing, you know, three games last week, Illinois, and then two against rival Michigan State. You know, that put them up to, what, 22 total games going into conference play. And 17 of those games were in conference, right? Like they got Bowling Green, Oakland, Ball State, Toledo, U- U- UCF. Those are the five games they got in out of conference. Michigan could have gotten 30 games in easily. Um, I had felt that in the beginning of the year, you know, for example, when Syracuse and St. Bonaventure were both looking for games, the Bonnies were 12 days, I think, without playing. Why can't they go play Syracuse at the Dome? Or why can't they play 
uh, Pittsburgh and Duquesne three hours away. Why can't they do that on a Saturday and a Monday? Um, you know, why can't, if you're in the ACC and you're Syracuse and you got to play NC State, you know, anyways, you know, why can't you go down and play two games in Raleigh on Saturday and Monday, right? Uh, these guys are all used to playing two games in 48 hours. I mean, you play a four o'clock Saturday, a big Monday, seven o'clock Monday, whatever the case may be. I thought college basketball almost, you know, could have used the BYU what was it, any team, any place, um, you know, any time, whatever the heck the, the, the phrase was, you know, I think they could have used that mantra. I think they could have really gone into playing, um, you know, a lot more games. Um, and, and I think as we go into the, you know, the, 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 the conference tournaments, I know that there's been a bunch that have been underway, but, you know, some of the big boy ones that are, um, you know, taking place and, 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 and the best teams out there. Um, I, I think that Michigan, you know, Gonzaga, Butler are, are probably uh, Baylor, excuse me, Baylor, uh, Michigan, and Gonzaga, you know, I, I think are probably your top three teams. Um, you know, I don't know... I just can't get a read on Illinois, Iowa. These teams have been kind of roller coastering up and down the entire year. The Ohio State's of the world. I mean, I think they're all really good. I think they're all Final Four contenders by far. But I don't. I can't get a read on how confident I feel in them compared to the top three. If that makes sense. Uh, having said that, it's college basketball, and a potpourri of things could happen. But, you know, a lot of these teams have played, you know, 24, 25, 26, 27 type games. I mean, if, if you look at the, if you look at the schedules, I mean, you know, you look at an Alabama, right? You look at, you look at Alabama, uh, a really nice year for Nate Oates. Um, you know, they just played two more games this past week against Auburn and Georgia. You know, they played 27 games. That's almost the whole schedule. You know, 27 games with, you know, 18 games in conference and you played nine out, that's a full slate. I mean, they started on Wednesday, November 25th because the SEC followed the pattern of their football season, right? And so, you know, for those who did not do that and for those who are now looking at, oh, we need games, we, you know, wish we had played five to eight more, you hear conference commissioners saying, well, we didn't really get a full schedule, Conference commissioners, athletic directors, some head coaches saying that on some podcasts and shows that I've listened to, you know, and I'm going, you know, guys, like, you, you could have scheduled anything you want. I mean, if we've learned anything with Corona, it is for sure that, you know, it's kind of go by the seat of our pants and see, you know, kind of what we can create. You know, this is a first time. We've never gone through this before. These are unprecedented times, right? So go try to play more games. Um, you know, a Virginia who, you know, at one point, you know, it's been kind of a top 25 team consistently through the year. Uh, and again, I'm not saying that Tony Bennett said this, but if you look at this particular team, they played Louisville and Miami the last week. Uh, you know, they've been playing two games a week or so consistently for the last several weeks. You know, they played a total of 22, 23 games and, and, and 17 in conference, which isn't bad for sure. And you got a bunch of non-conference games in, uh, I guess, six, including Gonzaga, uh, who just blew them out, of course. Um, but, you know, you lost Michigan State. You lost William & Mary. Um, you know, you lost Wake Forest, right? And so, um, you know, I, I just kind of – and that was in conference, right? And so I just wonder – um, you know, Virginia Tech, NC State. I mean, you, 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 you lost multiple games. I look at a team like Virginia. I mean, that, that's an easy phone call to go call somebody in the Mac or somebody like a, you know, a, a, a Big Ten team maybe. And say, hey, you know what? Why don't we do a little home-and-home home type of a thing? I mean, is there anything that says that a college basketball team can't play a home-and-home home in one regular season during the coronavirus uh, and if you can't, then you can play one, you know, if not, then go play Michigan, Michigan state on a Saturday, Sunday, uh, Saturday, Monday, you know, when you, when you have a, a ton of games that are not like, for example, 
you know, when they were going through the January 20th, although I guess they played two games on the 16th and 23rd, they played Saturday and Saturday. But during that long week off, you know, it's almost like how the holidays work. You don't want that in January. You don't want to have seven days off, even though you're practicing and, and keeping in game shape and all the like. You don't want that. And so when you lose the NC State game, you know, can can you call up a Virginia Commonwealth? You know, can you call up a, a, a Richmond, you know, in your own state and travel for X amount of hours, two, three hours, and go play one game and bus right back? I mean, I, I think you can. Um you know, if you're Syracuse and you're and you're and you're right there and and you're at the dome, uh, you know, I gotta believe that a UB can come in and and play you. A, a Bana could come in and play you. You could go to Duquesne and Pitt. You you could go to, um, you know, I know you don't want to travel, travel like go to California or anything like that. But you know, you can go go to an Ohio, right? And you could play maybe Miami. You could play Ohio, like the Ohio Bobcats. You could play Cleveland State. <laughs> you know. Um, I just thought that there were that there were a lot of ways to, to be able to do it, uh, to get more games than that is. Out of conference, in conference, you name it. But I think Gonzaga, Michigan, Baylor, you know, I think that's the top three. I think that the the, 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 the kind of the 1A second deck type teams, I think you're getting into the Illinois. I think you're getting into the, you know, into the Iowas. I think you're getting into the Florida States, the, uh, the Villanova. Hey, Villanova. This year, I'm not really sure. This is clearly not a classic vintage Jay Wright Oklahoma uh, 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 Villanova team, um, for sure. I mean, I like a lot of the I like a lot of the players on this team. I think they've got two bona fide major major scores on this club in terms of Jeremiah Robinson Earl and Colin Gillespie. You got to have guard play to win in March. They certainly have that. Uh, but Villanova has obviously been wildly streaky, and you don't have. Uh, you know, you don't have a vintage Jay Wright team here. Um, you know, you don't have a number one, top three, top five type team. I, 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 I mean, they could make it to the Final Four. They could. Uh, Oklahoma kind of maybe along with Texas and San Diego State and, and you know, Purdue, Loyola, Chicago, those kind of clubs in that third tier uh, moving forward. Maybe Kansas is somewhere between two and three. Creighton falls somewhere in here. Houston probably falls somewhere in here. Uh, maybe the second group. So th- those are some of the some of the teams that I look at. I mean, do I believe Oklahoma could win a national championship? Sure. Um, I don't feel as good about that as I do the top three. It was kind of the idea going into going around college hoops a little bit. And, and I think when we go into the conference tournaments, more of them again this week. We look at the Big Ten. We look at the Big Twelve. Uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna go to the SEC. We're gonna go to the ACC. We're gonna check out. Who has what, where, and 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 when, and and how teams can get you know better seeds or get even into the tournament? Um, you know it's going to be fascinating, and I think if you look at the teams who you know that could make the final four, but I think you got about thirty-five teams really. I mean, which is usually the case every single year. 35, 30 to thirty-five teams could make an elite eight, could make a final four. Uh, you've obviously got more than that to make a sweet 16 because you have a team that, you know, could get in there like a, a Toledo, you know, and, uh, and all it is is two wins and you're right in the sweet 16. But I think you've got maybe not 35, but 30 teams for sure. I mean, you know, and it extends all the way down to the Wisconsin's and the Colorado's and the BYU's and UCLA and Oregon and, um, you know, Purdue, um, you know, those type, the Tennessee's, the Florida's, uh, you know they're 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 in and around that twenty five to thirty area, um, but I, I like Michigan a lot. Uh, I think what Juwan Howard has done there has been absolutely terrific. Remember how worried Wolverine fans were of um, you know losing John Beeline and all that, and they have not really missed a beat at all. Um, I can't get enough of watching Isaiah Livers play. I just can't. I think he's such a prototypical. I think he's going to be a great NBA player as well. I really do. He's a senior out of Kalamazoo, Michigan. Uh, he's just an inside-outside forward, 6'7", 230, really passionate on the court, love watching his game play. Uh, Franz Wagner came back uh, you know, this year to Michigan. He's a guard. They've got guard play, which can help them uh, you know, in, in, in March. Uh, Michigan's really good. Michigan's really, really good. Um, you know, Gonzaga, clearly, for me, it's the number one team I like to watch in college basketball outside of my Bonnies. Um, 
you know, the problem with Gonzaga is that their, you know, games, you got to watch them in the first 10 to 15 minutes because they just blow everybody out. I mean, they're almost, they're pretty much unguardable. I mean, Corey Kispert kills you inside outside. Suggs kills you. Joel I, uh, kill. I mean, they kill you from the outside. Uh, Drew Timmy can just flat out dominate any team in America. And, you know, they play eight, nine, ten guys. Um, and that's going to be another thing in this tournament that a lot of teams do. They play a lot, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve guys. They're not going to change that. Uh, Gonzaga, Michigan, um, uh, you name it. And Gonzaga lost a lot out of conference too this year because of the corona. And they could have scheduled more people. Um, you know, but but look what they did, right? Look what Gonzaga, and I'll close on this. Look what they did to get games in. After they lost, you know, the Baylor game, they lost they lost Baylor, Tar- Tarleton, Southern, and Northern Arizona and Idaho, right? So they were off. They played December 2nd. They didn't play again until the 19th of December when they played Iowa and beat them, okay? Well, the game after... The two games after that, they played Northwestern State twice. They played them back-to-back days. And so I think that's great, you know. And then they played Virginia. Then they played Northern Arizona, Dixie State, and then they get into their WAC conference, right? And so that, to me, is a wonderful job by Gonzaga. They played, um, or in the West Coast Conference, the WCC, they played a team from the Southland. Now, are they going to dominate them? Sure, but Mark Few wanted to get games in, so I credit Gonzaga for doing that. So, um, you know, I, I think Michigan and Gonzaga, I think, will make the Final Four. Um, I haven't, you know, um, we're, we're a long way f- away from that, but I will say that if I, I feel good about two teams getting to the Final Four, I will tell you that I like Michigan and Gonzaga to get there no matter how the bracket looks, um, and we'll go from there. But it should be a really, really fun week, as always, and my goodness, what we lost last year <laughs> We are all so excited to have it back. College basketball, the month of March, nowhere near the same. Right? March is nowhere near the same without college basketball. Mike Lindsley with you, NL Sports Platter, brought to you by Brian Conboy of Mass Mutual, New York State, our good friends at Welch and Company Jewelers, and our great friends over at Hides of Liverpool. And listen to this. If you are in and around Central New York, you're going to want to hear about this deal. The entire month of March, they are doing a terrific, terrific food special for you. Uh, They're introducing some new menu items. The time has come to enjoy Hyde's March Slam Dunk Specials featuring tasty wings, warm, soft pretzels, all available during the month of March. Chicken wings, seven wings with a choice of sauce for just $8.99, three jumbo pretzels for $6.50. You can add a large Bud Light draft for only $3 more. It is the March Slam Dunk Specials at Hides of Liverpool. And if you use the code MLSP, MLSP, you will get 10% off your order during the March Slam Dunk Specials. Thanks to Hides of Liverpool for their support of the ML Sports Platter, as well as the Swan and Whitaker families for listening and supporting as well. As I always tell you, enjoy the games.